Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr. It's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And uh, I'm checking in on you. Uh, uh, <laughs> how's it going? Oh, Billy's fucking old Billy's sick king. Oh, Billy bed bugs. Oh, Billy springtime cold. Has any scientist figured out why a spring or summer cold isn't as strong as a wintertime cold? Jesus Christ, my fucking lovely wife puts on the heat because I'm sick here. She puts the fucking heat on like I, I feel like I got malaria now. Can't fucking breathe, man. The walls are closing in. Um, anyway, uh, got a fucking cold. It sucks. What are you going to do? I felt it coming on. I had that big show last week and I was, they had a little after party. And, you know, I didn't put my shawl on. You know, I'm literally getting to that age, man. You know, you know those old guys that just sit around with like a blanket on their leg, even in July. They just got that. They sit down, they, like their legs are cold. It's like we got to fucking walk around. They're like, hey, fought in Korea. You're like, all right, you can sit there. Sorry. It's just trying to help, man. You know, just trying to fucking help, man. That's all I'm trying to do. Dude, what happened to the fucking Bruins? I didn't see one second of the game. I was so elated with that. That. Game one, first of all, to Chuck, however you fight, I, I got to remember how to say that fucking name every year. Because what happens is I go to read it and then I forget how to say it. Dude, that guy, that, that first goal he got of the series, just an absolute fucking sniper. Between the legs of our defenseman, top shelf, just inside the post. I was just like, ah, fuck, here we go again. But um, I'm not a cunty sports fan. Like, I give it up if you got a good player. I fucking love watching that guy play. And what he did last year, you know, was, I, I, mean, I just wish they won the cup because I feel like that would have gone down with, like, you know, Kirk Gibson coming off the bench, hobbling up to the plate and hitting that home run off Dennis Eckersley over there in Chavez Ravine. Um I would have put that up again, you know, what is it, the next guy with the broken leg? I mean, the guy had a broken sternum, and he was still, you know, had to have his brother dress him, and he was still playing professional hockey at the highest level. It was unreal. So anyway, he scores a goal, and then all of a sudden the Bruins come back. Offense explodes, and we end up winning... It was 4-1, to one, then they had the empty net, or 5-1. to one. So I'm like, all right, that was fucking huge. And I was texting, uh, even after the second period, they went up one nothing, and then we came back and scored three goals, one with like 40 seconds left in the period. And we were up 3-1. to one. And one buddy of mine, who's a Ranger fan, who I think they're going to the final. The Rangers are just like, they got the whole team. They can score more goals than you, and they can also beat the fuck out of you. I mean, and that's, that's how it's done. As long as I've been fucking watching hockey. You know, if you can score more goals than somebody and beat the fuck out of them, it's over because no one's stopping your goal scorers because if they try and do anything stupid to your goal scorers, some guy's coming off the bench and it's going to give you what for. Huh? He's going to sit down and read the paper with you. Whatever, whatever fucking, <laughs> just making up expressions. He's going to give you the news. Huh? He's going to fucking, he's going to peel your wig back. He's going to fucking peel that apple. You know? He's going to punt that squash to the other side of the fucking something. Um, sorry, I was, at a, I was at a loss for an analogy there, so I just had to make something up. Um, anyway, so after two periods, I was texting with my buddy who's a Rangers fan, and I was just going like, I'm not going to be comfortable until there's like two minutes left in this game because last year I watched the Bruins have this team beat in game five in game six, you had him on the ropes, you had him beat, and then we just started, tra-la-la. It just, I don't know what we did. I still remember that play in the corner where there was two Bruins going for the puck and one Panther goes in, lifts our stick, takes the fucking puck, passes it over, and then you know it's in the back of the net. I was losing my fucking mind. I'm like, this is literally fundamental hockey. The fuck are we doing here, you know? 
When you're standing up and you're walking back and forth and you forget that you can barely skate backwards and you start screaming at professional athletes like, you know what's up? I was doing that. And um, what was I going to say? So I was just like, I hope there's enough guys left on this team that remember last year and, and the Panthers, they like the Terminator. They're like Charlie and Platoon. Like, Charlie ain't stopping for nothing. I got a bad feeling about this, man. Like, you got to fucking... They're like zombies. You got to shoot them twice in the fucking head. Like, you can't give them... They are going to play until the fuck... They're like badgers or wolverines, you know? We get it, Bill. They got no quitting them. Yeah, they don't. They don't. So, game two, I guess we just got the living shit kicked out of us. They took it to us. Um, so, but I feel good, you know, that we won one. I hate that whole thing that uh, the Bruins take home ice. It's like they didn't take home ice. There's still going to be four games in Florida versus three games. You're not taking home ice. It's just some, that's just some fucking, they just finagled the numbers to make you feel like something just happened. (laughs) I just don't get it. Uh, Well, Bill, it's simple math. No, no, it it is simple math. Four games are in their arena. Three games are in our arena. And just because we won one game in their arena does not mean that there's not going to be four games in that arena. And that doesn't automatically mean that they're not going to win a game in our arena. That's what's so stupid about that math, because now it's looking like, well, now, you know, the next fucking three You know, two out of three are in our building. It's like, well, yeah, if you fucking do it like that. That's like when people say bad things come in three. Threes. Bad things could come in fours if you waited long enough. You just call call the fourth bad thing number one. It's life. Bad shit happens. Good shit happens, right? Little this, little that. You say tomato. I say basil. Um... Anyway, so uh, I'll tell you the ser- like those series out west, that fucking Avalanche uh, Dallas Stars series. I'm going to watch that. And I finally checked in on who are these Timberwolves with uh, who's that guy? Anthony Anderson. What's the name of the guy? I they, I I I don't know anything about fucking hoop. I know Anthony Anderson is on uh, was on Blackish. All right, okay, and was and, and made his debut in that Jim Carrey movie. Remember that? My favorite one, one of the funniest scenes ever was those kids were obviously not his kids, but he just acted like they were. Jim Carrey has three black kids and like when they were all sitting on the couch and he's like sitting behind them like their shoulders and they're watching like Def Comedy Jam and they're all dying laughing and Jim's like trying to relate and laugh with them was fucking, I always thought that was such a brilliant joke. Um, Anyway, up two games to none last I checked against the Denver Nuggets and uh, everybody, you know, was talking about the Celtics. You know, we're up two games to none and like blah, 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 blah. But, dude, look, how about the Knicks? Knicks were up two games to none against the Pacers. How about me talking basketball over here? Um, I don't think anything's a foregone conclusion. But, like, uh, I think the uh, the Timberwolves are scaring the shit out of me. Um, we shall see. But they they swept the Suns. They I think they've yet to have, they haven't lost a playoff game yet. They're fucking six and zero, and they're going back to their own building. The Target Center, fucking Target Center, dude, right up the street from the Mall of America. By the way, now that all the malls seem to be going out of business, what the fuck are they going to do with the Mall of America? I don't know. What are they going to do with everything? You know, once we have to start living inside and and eating powdered food because the sociopaths that run corporations own politicians and none of them are stopping them on this fucking insane ride that we're on to absolute destruction. (laughs) If I meet one more fucking person that is criticizing Joe Biden or Donald Trump, I I don't even know what I'm going to do. I just look at the people now like they're dumb. It's just like, oh, you're a fuck. You, 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 you listen to bedtime stories. 
You're listening to CNN and Fox News. Once upon a time, there was another political party, and everything they did was wrong. But everything we do is right. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, plowing ahead here. Ah, oh, fuck. My wife's hilarious. She made me cancel everything today. I was actually psyched that she did because I was going to German Irish my way through this. She goes, you know, you go upstairs, you need to go, get in bed. She doesn't talk like this at all. Um, but that's just how I hear her voice when she's telling me to take care of myself. Um, so that's what I'm doing today. I'm just going to fucking lay in bed with this, like, I mean, she has the heat cranked up to the point. It's like something they used to do back in the day when somebody had tuberculosis and they couldn't cure it. So they would, they would you either cranked up the heat or you moved to the southwest part of this country where there was like a dry heat because they thought that maybe that like helped it out or whatever. Um, so anyway, anyway, what else is going on? Um, I returned to the scene of the crime the other night. I went back to the Hollywood Bowl. I did a guest spot on Seth Rogen's uh, show over there. And uh, I remember when I, when I was going back, I was like, why am I doing this? I just had the set of my life here. It, couldn't, it could not go better. Why am I coming back here risking fucking all of that up? And, um, you know, I was told, okay, you go over there, you're going to do 10 minutes, you're going to go on after this comedian. And the comedian ends up not showing up, was a little too banged up, hung over or whatever, right? So, <laughs> so now instead of following a comedian, because it was music and comedy, and, you know, a lot of times those are not good gigs. So now instead of going on after a comedian, I had to go on in between Post Malone and Snoop Dogg. And I'm just going, all right, Post Malone is a fucking superstar. And then Snoop Dogg, like, this is his hometown. Like, who's not going to go see him at the fucking Hollywood Bowl? That's what everybody is here for. So I had to, like, block that out. And uh, I went out there. And the crowd was great. And I went out and they just told what it was, it was the cool. Well, first of all, you know, there was so many people smoking weed there. So everybody was just kind of like, hey, man, like whatever, man. I just appreciate you going out on the stage and entertaining me, man. So everybody was in this really cool, you know, vibe. And uh, set that a whole fucking orchestra in like the, the, the Roger Moore white tuxedos playing you on. It was really cool. And... Uh, I went out there and it was like, I just picked up where I left off, just had like this great time. And, and I'm like, that was un, un, unbelievable. Right. And I get off stage and then Snoop goes on and I get to watch fucking Snoop Dogg in L.A. Um, fucking uh, doing his show in like his hometown, man. It was it was on it was like you know Mickey Mantle in Yankee Stadium like this is what you're watching right Larry Bird in the Boston Garden so uh, I get to watch him killing it and what's awesome about his show is like behind the DJ he had this guy he just had a microphone and uh, what's was he singing I think he was singing Snoop Doggy Dog and he was killing it right and they would just sort of vibe out and everything. And, and Snoop would be rapping his ass off of blah, 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 blah. And then he'd come back again and the guy would bring the mic up. Snoop Doggy. I'm like, that guy has one of the coolest jobs in show business. And I was laughing with Nia. Like, you just see this guy, like, walking in a mall. You had, if you had any idea what he did for a living. I got a picture with the guy. I was like, that's, like, the fucking coolest thing. And then there was another guy, too. And his job sometimes was to sort of rap along with the chorus. Like, uh, you know, I've been to a bunch of rock shows. It, you, you, you would know this looking at me, looking like Howdy Doody. I haven't been to a lot of rap shows. So I was like, uh, I was enamored with the whole fucking, the whole, the whole production. Because all I know about music is like, okay, you have a lead guitarist, a rhythm guitarist, a bass player, a drummer, and then the lead singer. All right. And the lead singer's out front and then the lead guitarist, he stands over there and he puts his arm around him. And then like the band, the rhythm section sort of fucking hangs back. Unless it's ACDC, you all walk up and you sing the chorus and then you come back. That's all my knowledge of uh, of music. So to watch like 
uh, you know, a rap show live. I, I, you know, I'm trying to think. I, I've gone to a disgustingly few amount of those shows. Who else have I seen? I saw Busta Rhymes after Dave Chappelle at the Hollywood Bowl. And that was another one. Like, he went out and just fucking murdered. Fucking murdered. Um, and it was the end of the show, too. And it was after Dave did a full set. He still went out there and somehow made the crowd, like, go crazy. Like, they hadn't already been entertained for, like, an hour and a half or whatever. So, anyway, I got to do that. And I hung out and everything, and then uh, the cold started coming back, and I'm like, ah, it's the springtime. It's not going to get a hold of me. Little Zycam, you know? I mean, I'll do some too. A little fucking fit fit up the nose there, thinking I was all right. And then the cold last night was like, nah, 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 dude. Settle in, buddy. A little three-day vacation inside your fucking sinuses. Do you guys ever see that that YouTube clip of that guy? He's got like a fucking fat Elvis haircut. And uh, he's talking to that preacher. And the preacher has him on specifically to talk about how when he found God, you know, accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Um, which I don't get. I thought God was Lord. They say Jesus is Lord. No, Jesus is the son of the Lord, Right. Or did God pass that business on? Like, who who right now is running that conglomerate? Any uh, anybody out there that follows Jesus? Can you let me know? Like, like how does that work? Is he, is he the Tom Brady of the team, and then God's like uh, the Robert Kraft or the GM? Well, he's got to be Robert Kraft. He's the owner of the team, right? I don't fucking know. Anyway. <clears throat> God is a loving God, all right? Is that why he makes wild dogs that fucking try to scare a mother giraffe away from a baby giraffe so they can eat it alive? That God? That God's loving? Snoop Doggy Dog! Um, anyway, uh, what else? Yeah, so what do we got? The Celtics game fucking three, I think, is tonight. I'm really watching a lot of the players, but I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch that Avs uh, Stars game, you know, because I'm taking a little time for me. Do you know what I mean? I'm tapping into my inner white chick right now. I'm just, I'm going to have a yes day. Just give yourself a yes day. Can you imagine doing that as an adult? Like how fucking self-involved are you? Like if you have, I understand if you don't have kids. Which, by the way, I've ever talked about that. I love adults that don't have kids. You know what I mean? They are like fascinating. It's as fascinating as watching someone who didn't have a kid have a kid and watching how it changes them. You know what I mean? I love watching people who don't have kids. Um, and I just like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to deal with that shit. And I, I just want to fucking hang out and have a couple of beers and sit on my back porch like, uh, I find that life fascinating because I don't have it anymore. And I just like, just observe, like, what, what is that like? That's got to go, wait, 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 man, what cool thing are you doing now, man? <laughs> Tell me. I want to hear about, really? That's awesome. I mean, as long as they're happy, you know what I mean? There's nothing worse than meeting somebody that had kids and wished they didn't or someone that never had kids and wished they did. But when you meet someone that wanted kids and they have kids and they're happy as shit, it is equally as satisfying to me to meet somebody who never wanted to have kids and is just fucking really enjoying the fact that weed is legal, you know? And, uh, you know... And, you know, and isn't, they're not a mess about it. They have a couple of puffs, you know what I mean? A little glass of red wine. Sit down. There's an art show coming at the exhibit. And they're going to go to that. Maybe they go into Spain or something. Because uh, that, yeah, I mean, by all means, fucking do that shit. And then tell the stories to people with kids. <laughs> we want to hear them. I'm happy for you. Um, but unfortunately, most people aren't like that. There's like actually arguments on the internet. 
where there's like people that have kids are like fucking yelling at people that don't have kids. It's like, well, they didn't have kids. That's a fucking great thing. The world is overpopulated. How about you give them that pound? And if you don't want to have kids and you have kids, you don't raise them right. And then those kids are assholes. And then your kids have to deal with those kids. So we, we should be like going, yeah, you want to have kids. Good for you. You don't want to have kids. Good for you. Do what you want to do. That's that weird thing that adults do. Like, there's only one way to do things the way I'm doing them. And I need you to also do what I'm doing so I can so you can reinforce that well, the choice I made was right. Um, I call those people entourage people. You know, if I can give any young people advice out there, never, never hang out with somebody. You can hang out with them for the night, but don't get involved with somebody that has an entourage. You do not want to do that because especially if they're in the same business as you, because once you get into the entourage in my business, they don't see you as trying to make it anymore. They just look at you as like, you know, a subset of the person they actually want to talk to and they don't see you as, a, as an individual anymore. And then also, if you get into an entourage, they're, they're like the group thought, which is really singular. It's the person that's at the top and everybody's standing around waiting for another adult to be ready to go so the three SUVs can go down the fucking street. <laughs> your, little, your little motorcade. You don't want to be... This might be the loner in me, but you don't want to be fucking involved. If you have any sort of aspirations yourself, you, 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 can't, get, you can't get involved in that shit. Um, it always reminded me of that, that cartoon with the, the big dog and the little dog. He'd be like, hey, Spike, hey, Spike, you want to you go chase a car? And he'd be like, nah. Psh. He'd give him the backhand. Hey, Spike, hey, Spike, you want to go chase a cat up a tree? Nah. Psh. You know, he's sitting there, you know, like your happiness is if the head person is happy. Then you could be happy because they're in a good mood and you don't have to worry that someone's going to get kicked out of their position. Um, anyway. Plowing ahead here. If I run my yap long enough. How about those Red Sox coming on? How about those Red Sox coming on up into third place? One again the other day. I fell off a little bit like uh, the home life here watching the Red Sox, but I've been checking in on the scores. And, uh, you know, we're behind the Yankees who are behind the fucking Orioles. We're doing all right. You know, I met a Yankee fan the other day and he like apologized. He goes, sorry, I'm a Yankee fan. And I go, well, why are you apologizing? the fuck are you apologizing for? You're a Yankee fan. Good for you. You got 27 championships. You must be happy. Don't fucking do that passive aggressive thing where you're like apologizing to me as if I've been suffering as a Red Sox fan. I haven't. Not since 2004. And then we won three more. So I'm good, buddy. All right. What it is, it's phantom limb syndrome that Yankee fans have. Like they, they, they want Red Sox fans to, uh, still resent them. And it's like, dude, all we wanted to do is win the World Series. You know, beating you guys in the playoffs was a fucking bonus. Like, we don't put that kind of pressure on ourselves the way you guys do every year. We got to win it every fucking year. And it's so all is right in baseball. We just wanted to win it once. We won four times. I mean, I'm not speaking for all Red Sox fans, but I'm, I'm fucking, to me, that was rolling. That's, that was the end of the movie. And then they won the World Series and the curse was over and, and then fucking four months later it starts again. What are, what are we going to do? Am I really going to watch Jaws 2? That's going to be better than the first one? I don't think so. Um, anywho, I got, a, uh, I got a live read. Oh, look who it is, everybody. It's Hims. It wasn't us. It was them. The Warriors. Uh, Hims, you know, your sex life is important. But your schedule is busy. You don't, ha you don't have the time to go to a doctor's office to get treated for your erectile dysfunction. Jesus fucking Christ. Like, priorities? Yeah, I gotta, you know, my dick doesn't work, but God damn it, I gotta, I gotta go down and find that screw fell out of the refrigerator. I gotta go down to Home Depot and try to find a right. Get your dick fixed. Um... Through HIMSS, you can now get treated for ED without stepping foot outside your door. Ever feel like you need a little boost in the bedroom? With HIMSS, you'll, you will feel confident knowing 
You can get hard and stay hard whenever you're in the mood. I love that paragraph. I'm glad they didn't talk around it with some eu- euphemism. Your fucking dick's going to stand up and salute the flag before it goes in the foxhole. Oh, Jesus. Uh, HIMSS provides access to doctor-trusted erectile dysfunction treatment options such as chewable hard mitts. <laughs> hey, honey, you want to fuck? I took a gummy. Brand name treatments like Viagra or generic alternatives for up to 95% cheaper. The process is simple and 100% online. No uncomfortable doctor visits. Answer, uh, you know what's funny is I think that people whose dicks even work still take this shit just so they can get an extra pump. You know what I mean? Like you're fucking going up against Schwarzenegger in the pose down. You know, you want to fucking rock hard. You want to bring the veins out. Um, answering a series of questions on their site and a medical answer a series of questions on their site and a medical provider will determine the right treatment option. If you if prescribed a medical provider, <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, if prescribed, your prescription ships to you for free. No insurance is needed. If erectile dysfunction is getting you down, you get it? It's time for you to join the hundreds of thousands of trusted HIMSS subscribers and get treated. Start your free online visit today at HIMSS.com slash Burr. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash Burr for your personalized erectile dysfunction options. HIMSS.com slash Burr. It's still going? I thought we wrapped it up. This copy goes on almost as long as your hard on will. Hard mints are chewable compound products which are not approved by or verified for a safety for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Maybe that's why you're talking to a medical provider. Uh, prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate or restrictions apply. You're a fucking drug dealer. No, I'm not. I am a medical provider. Uh, see website for details and important safety information. Subs- subscription required. Prices varies based on product and subscription plan. All right. Well, there you go. Jesus Christ. That copy went on forever. Forever and ever, amen. Um, I hope they get more honest with their copy. Hey, fellas, do you want to dick down your bitch tonight? (laughs) You want to have her face down, moaning in the pillow? Uh, You want to give her that strong dick? Come on over to (laughs) hymns. It's funny that they call it (laughs) hymns. What is that, gay Viagra? Why don't they call it hers? Um, Anyway, uh, I should have done the Southern accent. Acting like homophobia is only in the South. It's not only in the South, but it's definitely in the church. Um, All right, so anyway, what am I going to do today? Oh, Billy Twiddle, Twiddle Thumbs. I mean, I guess I could watch a movie. Oh, speaking of movies, has anybody seen The Fall Guy yet? I got to go fucking see that. You know, I mean, that that movie, it's just everything you want. It's making fun of this 80s, but also give, it's like making fun. I, I, I think it's going to be like making fun of it and, it, and an homage to, uh, cause, to those shows. Because I fucking miss those kinds of shows. You know, back in the day before they they just absolutely like eviscerated and ridiculed the guy's guy. Like all these nerdy writers, you know, that couldn't get any puss puss, right? They resented the Lee Majors of the world, you know, who could just come walking in in an orange tracksuit with no shirt underneath it. And it unzipped just below their pecs. And they had the perfect 70s chest hair and like Farrah Fawcett and all these gorgeous women were just falling all over themselves. They just couldn't fucking handle it. So they had to, you know, he's got some underlying insecurities or whatever. But, you know, of course, who doesn't? But when I was a kid, you know, it was all about every fucking show, it seemed. There was a cool guy in a cool car banging a hot chick. Like that was the formula. And we all, like, lived vicariously through it, just going fucking, you know, Lee Majors, James Garner. James Garner did it the coolest way in the Rockford Files because his character was actually, like, 
like as much as he, you know, Jim, James Gardner was one of the, you know, the classic good looking leads in Hollywood. But like his character was like just such a fuck up. It's like living in a trailer down on the beach. He was always having women problems. He would always lose fights. Um, but he was still cool. Burt Reynolds. All of those guys. They were just the fucking coolest guy. All of those shows. Hardcastle and McCormick. Uh, oh, what was the one I used to watch? Matt Houston. Used to drive around that Excalibur. He had the perfect fucking, you know, hair and mustache. And you're just like, this guy just walks outside and like just, it's just raining women. Like, how does he have time to solve any crime with all of this distraction coming at? Like, his thing, that's what it really was. It wasn't the car. It wasn't the good looks and it wasn't all the women. It was the focus to still actually keep the career going was, was incredible. So the fall guy, I feel like, is going to do a, the perfect... Co- but it was also ridiculous, too, let's be honest, you know. <laughs> I watched this this Kojak episode the other day from like season three and Telly, Telly Savalas out of nowhere and that season comes in with the collar all the way out to his shoulders unbuttoned all the way down to like almost above his navel in a police precinct it's just like did you come straight from the disco what did you do with your coke spoon you're a cop what am I looking at here right so I feel like they're going to make fun of that, but there's also going to be that awesome truck. Um, and it's got Ryan Gosling, who just threads the needle of, like, tip of the cap while making fun of it. Um, I got to go. See, I'm going to see that this weekend. Without a fucking doubt, I got to go see that movie. Um, I don't know why they don't bring a show like that back, you know, and just do it with that sort of vibe. Like you're doing it while you're making fun of it, but you're still doing it, you know? I don't know. I, you know why? Because I don't, I don't know that cars are as like individually cool as they used to be. Because there's like some of the sickest cars of all time are happening as far as like how fast they are. Uh, you know, everybody talks about those muscle cars and everything. The thing about those muscle cars is they look so fucking cool. But they're slow as shit, unless you put something modern in it. They were fast back then. You know, if you wanted to go in a straight line, the American shit anyways, right? But like the cars like today, or I don't know, like the level of horsepower. I saw a cool one the other day. This guy, uh, it had like a mid-90s Volkswagen sedan. Or maybe might have even been the uh, late 80s. I'm not real good with the, the, the Vol- Volvo, not Volkswagen, Volvo stuff. And he put like a modern day Corvette engine in it and put racing seats, took out the back seat and just lightened the whole thing up. And he had like the fucking, you know, the five point seat belt like he's in a F-16. And it was one of the sickest sounding cars ever. And it was because you heard that American rumble in this, this, was it Swedish? Is that what Volvo's from? The Finland? I don't want to piss off the... Uh, the fucking, what are they, the, the Nordics, Scandinavia. Um, anyway, um, I'm just fucking babbling. This is probably the, uh, the Dayquil. My wife gave me a shot of Dayquil. You know, so now I just spend the rest of the day just walking around being agreeable in this fog. I'm like, yeah, hey, man, like, whatever you want to do. I mean... I'd appreciate it if you turned the fucking heat. I'm literally sitting podcasting and I'm sweating. <laughs> now, I want all you fucking uh, medical advisors out there, whatever the hymns people are, to now write in and be like, sweating is good for you. You have no medical background. You know what your medical background is? Is listening to other people on Instagram going, you know what's good for cancer? Eat this. Um, anyway. All right, that's it, people. I talked as long as I can talk. Enjoy the music picked out by the uh, always wonderful Andrew Themelis. And then we have a bonus episode of the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. Have a great weekend, you cons. Go Bruins, go Celtics. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday morning podcast for Monday, 
May 9th, 2016. What's going on? How you doing there, fuckos? Um, old Freckles laying on his back. Trying to get rid of the sciatica. It's much better. Sciatica! Sciatica! Uh oh, oh, uh oh! Sciatica! A lot of people don't know that was the original lyrics to Panama. You know? David Lee wanted to say, you know, sciatica, and Eddie wanted to, and Alex wanted Panama. And Michael Anthony's like, come on, guys. You know, except he said it in a much higher voice. Can we fucking just get along here? And David ended up giving in to the brothers, and that's what, next thing you know, he was on his own. I'm just a gigolo. So, um, yeah, my back's doing, uh, it's doing much better, slowly but surely. I've, I've kind of found out it's going to sort of work itself out if I just don't have to sit on my fucking ass from here to Jacksonville every other week. But that's the life that I live, you know? This is the weirdest injury ever. Usually if you're fucked up, sitting down, you know, and resting is a good thing. This thing, I just got to kind of, I got to lay down. (laughs) I'm a mess. I'm taking that fucking ibupro, I don't even know what the fuck it is. Some anti-inflammatory thing. I'm stretching like a fucking NHL goalie, trying to get everything all fucking undone down there. But I I don't know what's going on. I don't know. But it is... uh, it is getting better, but I um, I flew all the way back today from uh, Jacksonville. Uh, had a great time. And by the way, here's here's some uh, here's some advice for you when you're out on the road and you're gonna get a breakfast. All right, unless you're in some mom and pop place and you can see over the counter, you can watch them making your food, which I don't necessarily really like to do. If you're gonna order eggs, don't ever order scrambled eggs. I know what you're thinking. Why, Bill? Why why wouldn't you do that? Because they got a giant fucking vat that they've made. Scrambled eggs are the fucking oatmeal of eggs when you go to restaurants. It's just, it's like the tray of lasagna. It's just that, here's your fucking, you know, here's your fucking eggs. Especially, like this morning, the place where I went to in Jacksonville. I ate at the Chili's restaurant in Jacksonville, Florida. I know, you guys, you're jealous, right? Oh, my God, he gets to see everything. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so me and Forrest Shaw, who murdered it all week, um, we ordered the, the whatever, the American breakfast or something there. And your only option on the eggs was scrambled. OK, now, if that's the fucking case, that means they got a giant vat that was probably made. I don't know how long ago, whatever the health code violation is. Plus five minutes, you know it's been sitting. So you got the rubber fucking eggs and then bacon. They just make a bunch of fucking bacon. They got that sitting to the side, you know. And then they had their bullshit hash browns, which, you know, it was already all the whole fucking thing was already made. The only thing that really tasted good was the biscuit. So um, if you're ever at the airport, you know, or if you go down to the hotel, you know, lobby for their continental breakfast, um, you always never order scrambled eggs. Order eggs over easy. Get an omelet, you know. Um, do something like that where they just not, aren't going to just have the shit already made. Um, or you could do the gross shit with the syrup. But that's going to fuck your whole day up, I feel. I mean, not like I didn't order a big salty breakfast. But for some reason, a salty breakfast, as bad as it is, I can continue to function. But if, if you get a waffle or pancakes or French toast or that shit... You know, you might as well just have somebody put you in a fucking sleeper hold because because you're going down and you're going down early. Um, so anyway, just a little travel tip for you there. Um, so anyways, you know, all, all this past week, uh, the lovely Nia, my beautiful wife, was away. And I was telling you how immaculate I was keeping this place. Fucking immaculate. All right. And um I literally, like, there was no trash in any of the barrels. All the f- fucking pillows were all poofed up. Looked like It looked like a showroom, the living room, right? I made the fucking bed, you know? It was spotless. I wiped down my side of the fucking sink, you know, brushed my teeth and all that shit. Spotless, okay? I got a car washed and waxed, filled it up with gas, all of that shit. Everything was done. 
Went through all the bills, got the junk mail, all the bullshit, the recycling, fucking everything. I did everything, right? So I'm thinking she's going to come home, you know, because I was leaving. And right as I was leaving, she was coming home. So we were just missing each other, right? So I was thinking when she came home, she was going to be like, like, oh, you know what? I might have to bring her in for this shit. Uh, you know what? I'm going to have to bring her in for this. Hang on one second. Hold on one second. All right. All right. So I'm back here. So anyways, let me keep setting this up. So my whole thing, Nia, <laughs> was that when you came home, this place was going to be absolutely spotless. So you'd be like, oh, my God, that's so nice. <laughs> and then also you wouldn't feel like I was this hopeless sap without you. Because that always bugs me, like when women go, like they they, they they fall apart without us. Like I'm like I never, I've never said that about you, nor have I ever thought that. It's I've never come home after being away and the place has been in shambles because you don't know what to do. Oh, so I don't know why. So you all keep that effort was for it. nothing. No, but you keep holding on to some idea of of something that. Does Are you not quoting exist. an '80s song? What? Oh, talking it's to the not mic. Man spreading, huh? <laughs> Well, I I got to be on the fucking couch here. Um, no, I don't know what you're so concerned about that for. Like the the place has never been disgusting or gross after I've gone away, so I don't know why you have this big hang up about. You know, I, I don't I don't get it. You know what? Now I don't either. Well, I'm trying to think. Will you fucking relax and let me work through my shit? No. Oh, okay. Sorry. What a jerk! <laughs> yes. You're telling this story. All right. And then you're out. Lo- <laughs> Love so any don't I because I'm told what happened. So <laughs> I'm fucking waiting. I'm on the road on the road again and I'm in fucking Hollywood, Florida. Right. Mm-hmm. And all I'm thinking is, oh, the text message I'm going to get. Oh, it looks so great. It's so wonderful to come home to a nice clean house that looks like a fucking showroom. And what do I get? I get a fucking videotape from you. <laughs> She's in the pantry. Now, yeah. evidently, something went bad in the pantry. No. Okay, something didn't go bad in the pantry. It's just some shit that's going down in the pantry. There's some shit going down in the pantry. So here, here's the deal. It's I'm going fucking down in the pantry. I'm I'm here by myself. I'm writing on the fucking show every night till seven o'clock at night. I come home, my brain is fried. I come home, I order a pizza, I pour a scotch, I eat, and then I stare at the wall. I go to bed and I get right back up, and I'm we stare at the next draft and the next script. That's been my life. So right. I didn't in defense of me. Okay. The one fucking place I didn't go into. So it was the pantry. Sh- it was the pantry. <laughs> Stop saying. I, I don't like that word. I just realized. Pantry. Pantry. Stop Why? saying. Why? I don't what like it. Be called? It just. It's a. I don't know. It's too close to panties in this food. <laughs> and I don't like when food and sex are combined. It's okay. No, I know you don't like that. Your you pantry. think that's weird? Oh, that nine and a half weeks when he's fucking her with all the groceries on her. <laughs> I just was like, look, either eat or fuck. Like, not together. You know, <laughs> so anyways, um, so she sends me this video. She's like, BB, how did you not see this? Right. It just yes. starts fucking giving me all this shit. I'm like, what the fuck? All right. And she pans up to the top of the fucking ceiling. And there was what was it? There's larvae. Larvae. Little. Yeah. Little moths. Modal. What? It's an inside joke. Oh, go ahead. Inside with who? With the fucking people listening to oh, this. Oh, when okay. I when I when I do the um, advertising. <laughs> no, yeah, there's some all sort this of larvae. Bugs or there's some shit there's up. moths and stuff because some like if there's flour that's been opened and it's not sealed up properly or grains or cereal, they'll create little moths. Like if you have fruit out for too long, it'll make fruit flies. So that was what it was happening. It doesn't make fruit flies. It attracts them. No, it creates them from that. I was just talking to the Terminex guy about it. They just, they, I don't fruit know. Fruit flies come from apples? Listen, yeah. Like if you have fruit and stuff out too so long, an and it orange to go fucks bad. an apple, and then fucking nine months later you get a fruit fly. You're like, no, really, there's that's no, not... there's no womb in there that's making an apple. No, Bill, that's not what I mean. It's not fruits well, having sex. That's what I'm saying. Have... Well, that's what you're saying. You're saying no, they I'm come from. No, I'm not saying it. that. I'm saying they. I listen. I don't know. I'm not a fucking Terminex person. But he was what telling me is those goddamn that when it's dirty gr- moths fuck on those apples out in the orchard. No, and they plant not... their seed in there, and then it well, comes out like alien. Okay. Bill, there's not any fruit in the pantry, okay? Stop we have, pointing at me. We have grains. I'm just staring at your crush right now. <laughs> it's so comfortable, though. 
My lower back is so comfortable right now. Oh, you know what? I figured out a thing to get for you for that. But anyway, we'll get back to that. But if you have grains and cereals out exposed in like this little closed environment where it gets warm, it produces these larvae and little flies and moths and shit. So that's what the guy just told me. Well, he's not saying it right. Well, how are you saying it? Are you saying I'm it better? Saying Please, what... like, tell me how you explain things and how clear it is when you explain things. Okay. What I would say... <laughs> Is like, you know, if you're having a cookout and you leave food out, all of a sudden flies and ants show up, but they don't come from the food. That's what he told me. Oh, but you keep saying they, they're coming from the apples and it's confusing I didn't me. Say that it came, you said it came from apples. I said nothing about you apples. You said it comes no, from apples. No, I, I did not say it I'm came from apples. I'm going this. It when I'm came dumb. from apples. I would never say it came from you. Start throwing apples into the mix. I was trying to explain to you about grains and shit. All right, and maybe I was, you're right. Maybe no, you're I, right. I was saying it's like fruit flies. This is when why I have, sucked in school. I can't even hear what you're saying. Because you don't listen. That's why you goddamn ADD. You don't listen. <laughs> You don't listen, and then you start saying things, and you said them, and then you attribute them to the other person. Like, it's so confusing to talk to you sometimes, because you don't listen. Oh, it's so fucking hard. It is hard. Oh. How about we were just watching The Simpsons, and you watched the entire episode, and midway through it, you were like, why is that happening? And yeah, I'm like, where, where did the blue snake Like a major from? plot point that had been explained not even five minutes earlier. But you don't pay attention. Well, how about this? How about my fucking back is out and I, I was in Jacksonville, Florida this morning. How about that? What does that have to do with anything that we're talking about? Well, maybe I'm a little fucking, you know, not <laughs> focusing on a fucking cartoon. <laughs> okay, you're right. You're such a baby when you you're travel, right, too. Whenever you travel, you fucking, for like one day, you're like, oh, my God, I don't know how you do this. And then it goes right out your fucking head. And then the next next time I'm coming back off the road, you're like, oh, let's go, uh, you know, Susie Fricassee's having a fucking hoo-ha down the fucking street. You want to go to that? When I say no, you flip out at me. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. You know exactly what I, you know who she is, too. Susie Fricassee? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. She's that broad down there next to the thing. <laughs> All right, so whatever. So she comes home, and evidently there's some sort of bug horror movie and you know how what infestation infestation you know yes. how how the ladies react they don't like insects <laughs> you know what i mean they don't like insects you would not have enjoyed that the if way you walked in the there. way men don't like cats <laughs> i hate those fucking things there's nothing better than a cool cat i like a cool like cat cats. that chills and I'm lays in the fucking sun yeah you know, I like the ones their that are aloofness. not creeping up on you. Yeah, I don't like that. When they're practicing killing you, <laughs> I don't like that. You just look over and they're staring at you from the corner. <laughs> no, then they stop and try and play it off. I don't like. I don't like that they <laughs> stand on your chest in the morning, right, right. waking you up. I don't like they shit in a box and then like you got to pick it up. It's just too much. It's too much. <laughs> Cleo shits just outside. We outside, still, but we yeah. still got to pick it up. I know, but I don't have to. It's not in the house. True. You know what I mean, if you're gonna shit in the house, go in the toilet. If you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think some people can train their cats to shit in the t in the toilet. I don't know how, but well, I can tell you how they how? can't communicate with other human beings. So they put all their energy into. Yeah, like they they got like that gift. They have like a like a Asperger. Oh, with cats. I see what you mean. Aspergers with cats. With cats. <laughs> some sort of. Um, What's that thing they're always talking about nowadays? Autism? Autism. Yeah, they're like autistic with people, but okay. they right. communicate let's, with let's cats. Just, just stop with the mental... You know, they can like play an instrument really no, well No, no, no. Just right? stop with the what it is? diagnosis of the mental illnesses. Just don't. Just stop right there, <laughs> please. What are you talking about? You're going to get angry tweets. I'm not mocking, mocking any of that. I'm making fun of people that put... You can't fucking say anything anymore. Everybody gets all I know, worried. I know. I know. Nia, I do benefits for all of those things. All of those things. I know. Give up my free fucking Some time. Some of your best friends all are black. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <sighs> I remember when things were funny. Oh, it was so simple back in the day where you yeah, could just it was. You could say, just say shit. things and no one Yeah, and every fucking jerk off didn't have some way they could just spout about how fucking annoyed they are. But everything else is fine as long as it doesn't come around to my world. Can I just ask what this situation is here with the Ziploc bag? What about it? And how you're keeping your equipment stored? Yeah. Bill's got this cord and the little foamy part that you put on a... The windscreen. The windscreen. 
and a couple of batteries and an old Ziploc bag that's ripped and just doesn't even zip anymore. Right. So I'm just wondering why, <laughs> basically. Because it, it still holds the things, and if I just throw that thing out, another one's going to break, and then that thing right there is probably going to end up on the nose of a porpoise, and it's not going to be able to eat, and it's going to die. Because <laughs> everything ends, ends up, up in, in the, the ocean. ocean. Yeah, you know, they always say that. Put litter in its place. It's like the second, all this shit that you throw out, they're saying you don't pollute. We all pollute. It's just some of us. The, do you take this on yeah, the road I, with you? It's not like I was having an idea there. Go ahead. I mean, do let's I be take honest, that on the Bill, road? You're just going to be like babbling about something that you don't really <laughs> know about. So, I mean, I don't really feel well, that's like the charm I'm, of the I'm podcast. missing anything. Uh, so, you take this on the road with you? Yes. All right. Well, I, was, I could and maybe I've, get I've you a nice never had a problem. leather satchel. <laughs> really? You got to skin a fucking cow? Because I already, I already have one. It'll there. last longer than putting it in this ridiculous thing. That's never going to biodegrade. What's this? That thing. That thing won't biodegrade. Uh, that thing will be here somewhere uh, in the dirt somewhere for hundreds of fucking years after right, we're gone. I'm just saying you can have a nice way to carry your things. It doesn't look like, you know, the Why bag that we used shit? to use for sandwiches. It's what is just... your fascination with just like buying shit? What do you mean? Fascination with buying shit? Obsession. I mean, look at this. Look at this Autism. that you're carrying this thing in. I really wish you guys could see the Ziploc bag right now. It's It's a mess. A man of your stature should not be carrying around your podcast equipment in an oh, old whoa, ass whoa, what did you ripped say? Ziploc bag. A man of my stature. Fucking yeah, two seconds stature. ago, I was a fucking moron. You can be both. And now because now you... <laughs> <laughs> Touche from Nene. <laughs> so who do you like tonight? Who, who we got? Who St. Choices? Louis Blues. Meet me in St. Louis, Louis. Versus who? The Dallas Stars, formerly the Minnesota North Stars. Are these hockey teams? Yes, they are. Oh, if they're not like the Kings or the uh, Bruins, I don't really know. Oh, yeah, what are your feelings about the Kings and the Bruins? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it came down to it, I would be a Bruins fan because I'm from Boston. So. Oh, you're just saying who you're going to root for. Yeah, but the, oh, okay. the rest of them, I don't know. Those are my two. Who do you like? I like both teams, but I just – I I – Started pulling for the Blues because the Blues have been in the league since 1960. Well, for, who's getting who? Because the Bruins didn't make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, I got to pick somebody. And I'm not going to jump on the Blackhawks and Kings bandwagon because they're always in it. So I'm going to go for, for an underdog. And I was like, well, the Blues, they've been around since 1967. So have the Minnesota North Stars. But the people in Dallas haven't been rooting that long. But I really like the players and shit. I like, I like Dallas. But I, I've, I've been rooting for... Um, I'm babbling over here. Look at a me. little bit, yeah. St. Louis. Are there going to be? Oh, relax. Is there going to be a, a Kings game that we can go to? Because I really enjoyed going to that those two Kings games we went to. Yeah, they got bounced out. They're done. What do you mean bounced out? They uh, they got beaten by the San Jose Sharks. Oh, so they're not in it. It's over. It's over for them. The Stanley Cup playoffs. There you go. They got they okay. lost in the first round. What about the Brewies? We didn't make it. We were. Oh well, then I don't get well, shit. Well, we we over. <laughs> <laughs> well, we overachieved throughout the year because, at least as far as I was concerned, I'm kind of who the fuck am I? But I mean, with the players that we had and everybody that we got rid of, I thought we were just going to be trying to figure out who the fuck everybody was for half the season, and then maybe you know, I don't know. What about the Toronto Blue Jays? Is what that happened a was team? we were going to be making the playoffs, and everybody was all bunched together. We look at fucking third seed. Then we had a West Coast trip, and we got our fucking asses kicked, and uh, it all went away. And uh, then Flyer and Red Wings fans talk shit about, you know, ha-ha, you didn't make the playoffs, and they both got the right there, Fred, in the first fucking round, so I enjoyed that. Okay, well, the Toronto Blue Jays, is that a is that a hockey team? No, that's baseball. Oh. The Toronto Maple Leafs. The, uh, the Maple Leafs got the first pick in the draft. Who are the Raptors? Are they a, a hockey team? No. <laughs> Who are they? They're a basketball team. Oh, Jesus. Keep keep saying this shit. You mm. know what? And then I'll do – you you pick something else that I don't know anything about. We'll see who's more right. Um, what are you into that you know about? Did I just uh, say that? Is that a question? <laughs> what are you into that you know about? <laughs> I don't know. Fashion. Okay. Go ahead. Um, oh, Jesus. <laughs> What's the name of the guy who makes is, fun of fat people? He used to be fat. Ah. Oh. Is that that's is, that's not Alexander Wang, is it? No. Is that Michael Richards? <laughs> is
Is it Michael uh, Michael Kors? No. He's German. Is it Paul Mitchell? And he is the head of a very, very, like the most famous fashion house in the world. It's not Versace because he got based... shot by that guy. Uh, yes. <laughs> no, it's not It's not, not Versace. Chanel because that was a chick and she's dead. Right, but... She has an apartment in Paris that you can go into if you're skinny enough. Right, but <laughs> you're, you're closed. You're getting there. Chanel is right. Chanel is the right fashion house. The person uh... who you're talking about. Is the the head creative director for Chanel? He looks like a war criminal. Right, he's German. Oh, there you go. He's... <laughs> <laughs> and why were they war criminals, Nia? Because they lost. We would have had just as many people going to fucking Nuremberg. We really would have. <laughs> okay. Dresden. Karl Lagerfeld. Ah, oh, fuck. Remember when we saw him and the last time we were in Paris? In the cab, and I started freaking out because I saw Carl Lagerfeld oh, that's right. walking down the street in Paris, and I thought he's I was, a cool looking dude, man. He he's is. a vampire looking. He's dude. a vampire, vampire war criminal, absolutely. old queen looking dude. Yep, pretty much. That's him. All right, name a sports team. Go ahead. Um, I'll name one. You tell me what it is. The are All the right. Yellow Jackets. Somebody, <laughs> or did I make that up? Yellow Jackets. I feel like that was a high school. I feel Team. like that was a fucking fusion Never band. Mind. Um, what about? Wait a minute. The... No, no, it wasn't. That's uh, like Wake Forest or something. That's a college basketball team. Oh, There's some, okay. some sort of jackets. Uh, it was a... the Grizzlies. Yep, Who were what... the Grizzlies? Toronto. No. Michigan. It's someplace cold that would have grizzly bears, right? So it's not going to be a southern good, team. Good guess, but they moved. They Midwest? were initially in, they a, were initially in Vancouver. Oh, okay. Is Vancouver. it a Midwestern kind of thing? They were initially in Vancouver, and then they went to – now they're in Memphis. Oh, the, so the Memphis Grizzlies. And for some dumb reason, they kept the name. Kind of like when the New Orleans Jazz moved to Utah, the mm -hmm. whitest fucking place ever. And the Utah Jazz. Like yeah, you'll never makes... see any jazz or hear any jazz in Utah. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> there are no jazz clubs in Utah. Yeah, it's like the New Orleans Mormons. New Orleans Mormons? <laughs> yeah, New Orleans Mormons. <laughs> I like that name better. Um, all right. Well, we enjoyed you here, Nia. Oh, I'm done? I don't know. Your phone's ringing. Oh, God. Oh, look at us. I know. I got to call her back. Um, Are you done with me? Are you wrapping up the podcast? Did you answer questions? No, but you can come back for that. I'm I... actually kind of tired, so I think I'm going to leave. Oh, damn, nice reversal. I kicked you <laughs> off, and then you're like, no, let me come back, and then you tell me to go fuck myself. You know what? I, I enjoy that. I respect that. So I just came on to tell the larvae story. Larvae, larvae, and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here so I can straighten out my legs and fucking get my – I feel like Kennedy right now. Are you even able to do a podcast in the upright position anymore? Um. <laughs> This is why I married you. This is the type of compassion that I've come to expect from you. You're such a fucking baby. I, I tough my way through all of this shit. I never, I never see doctors. I don't take medicine. That's because you're dumb. It isn't not because you're dumb. tough. It's no. because you're dumb. No, it's people I think they're so tough because medical. they don't go to the hospital. They don't go to doctors. They don't take medicine. No, you're dumb. We have advances in our society that you don't take advantage of. I am dumb, I am dumb but of. I'm tougher than you. You're a baby. So fine. Be tough all you want, but like, be smart and tough. Go to the doctor. If you're so tough, this go to the feels, doctor and hear like what they have to say. This feels like the turning point in like an after-school special. Yeah, well, I'm getting there. Be <laughs> tough by going to the doctor and hearing what they have to say. That's real toughness. That's real talk. That's real talk, son. All right. I'm out of here. Nini out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I had to. Ah, I, I enjoyed when you come on. I, I like I it. I missed you, BB. Huh? All right. Get don't out Don't say huh. You heard me. Listen, I went out. You know, you know why I don't go to fucking doctors and all that shit? Why? Because doctors, they practice medicine. They practice on you. Oh they don't God. have shit down. And one of the one of the things that they still don't know they a lot about. They call it a practice, but it's not like they don't mean it like they're practicing like you sit in here practicing drums. You know that's not the same thing. They went to medical school. I understand that. So why are you like taking that word so literally? Have you ever seen Lars Ulrich play live? He uh, practices. No. He fucks up all the time with Metallica. Oh, my God. Nia. Yes. I'm telling you, that's what it means. You practice medicine, and then you learn off of other people. Just look how much better hair plugs have got.
Look how much better they're getting with the fucking, you know, cut and part of your eye out, and then you can see better. You told me you were going to go to a doctor to figure out what was happening with your leg. Okay? So oh, I know what it is. I know it's you sciatica. think. I know you think you know what it is, but can you please go to a doctor and All so right. it doesn't become a chronic issue? Can I finish, though? And then when you're, you know, 50, which is. Can I, can I not finish? Not that far away. Can I finish? You can be. <laughs> You can have some sort of handle on it. Yeah, one of the things that they know the least about is the back, okay? And I'm just, I'm just not going to just go to a fucking chiropractor. I'm going to find somebody, you know, who has a good reputation of not just fucking opening That's people fine. up like a... It isn't fine because I wasn't done <laughs> talking. You always jump in. Because you're suggesting that I just want you to go to some random-ass clinic... I was just some, joking some around. I was joking around. Well, I'm holding you to this because you said you were going to do it. So, are you going to do it? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> I don't like going to this. I don't like going to the doctor the way I don't like going to the fucking mall. I, just the whole idea of going <laughs> over there and parking and just the whole fucking thing. I know. I Can know. you feel me, Sal? Make sure you show up 15 <laughs> minutes before. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll be there. See you then. I know, but once it's done, it's done. And you know, you know my first on. show in Hollywood, Florida, there was a couple of ladies <laughs> in the front row uh, were asking if you were there because they needed relationship advice. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, they were actually... like, "How come we don't have boyfriends?" No, they didn't say that. Yes, that's what they said. Someone actually wrote me and asked me about you proposing. And actually, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to talk about this email I got. Should we do it today or should we do it Thursday? No, who the fuck is writing you and how the fuck are they writing you? Because they write my, because of my website, tenderheadedfilms.com. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so they were writing me because remember I was going to do a podcast all those years ago and I just never did it. Mm -hmm. um, no, they wrote this whole thing about how did you get a guy who was so anti-marriage to propose and... All that kind of stuff. And how did it happen? And did I propose? No, I did not propose. Bill proposed to me. Uh, and all that stuff. It was, and then what did you just write? He, I wore I him didn't down. Write, I didn't. Excuse me? <laughs> I wore him down. No, no. See, this is why we have to talk about it. Because that's some bullshit. No, we don't. Even don't. Put that I'm out just there. making a joke. Will you fucking relax? You down. You loved me. You missed me. You told your larvae story. <laughs> now, one thing about show business is you leave them wanting more. <laughs> So get your fucking cute ass out of here. All right. Goodbye. I want to okay. talk about that story, though. I want to answer Oh, that we all want to do person. things in life. <laughs> Beat it. Goodbye. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Nene. Yeah, so that's what I came up to. She fucking shows me this big goddamn thing about all the fucking... I mean, granted, as much as I'm going to bitch it, it's, it was a bunch of fucking larvae. I swear to God, she says that comes from apples and flowers, not flower, and flour being left out in grains. Whatever. You know what? If you agree with her, you can go fuck yourselves. How about that? All right. Let's read a little advertising here for this week, shall we? All right. And with that, it's over. Come on. Come on now. Delete. Close the window. And on to the rest of the bullshit. <clears throat> I had the worst fucking. He was a good guy, but I had a. Bad cab driver on way back from the fucking airport. He was one of those um, one of those people that can't keep a consistent speed, you know, so they make your car sick. And what was hilarious was he was driving a Prius, and the way he was driving this thing, I would be surprised if he was getting eight gallon, eight, eight miles per gallon. He just kept doing that, wah, wah, just stomp and glide. Um, I, I just amazed me some people like how they cannot hear. You can't hear the engine. You know, you can't hear the fucking RPMs going through the roof. You don't understand that as wasting fuel. I know, you know, how bad those cabbies get fucked over. You'd think that he would be concerned about something. You'd think if you drove for a fucking living, you'd have an understanding of how a fucking engine works. Um, it was so fucking annoying. It actually, it just kind of just became funny. And he was a really nice guy. But um, I don't know, some people like... It's almost like, it's like they're driving with a fake foot, you know, or a mechanical foot, like the prototype. And, they, you know, it's either on or off. There's no um, consistency of speed. This guy, he just kept going up to like 65, 70 miles an hour and then glide back down to like, you know, 52. And of course, I'm looking at my fucking phone, so I'm starting to get sick. Yeah, you know, it was, it was a shit show. 
an absolute fucking shit show. Oh, you know, when I went to Florida, by the way, I landed in Miami. Every time I land into Miami, all, you immediately start seeing all these beautiful women. And every time I go there, I just hear Tony Montana's voice going, the city is like one big pussy waiting to get fucked. Um, and I was trying to bait Nia into those two women that were sitting in the front row to get into that fucking conversation. Um, but she didn't buy the bait. She didn't take the bait. Because they were like, why don't we have boyfriends? You know, and you should have seen them. Because you, I don't know, because you guys are, you're not wearing any clothes. <laughs> That'd be the one thing. As beautiful as you are, no guy wants to put up with that. You got to walk down the street like some overprotective dog. Hey, 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 hey. Keeping everybody away. Everybody's. I mean, one of them was barely wearing a shirt. Granted, I wasn't complaining for where I was standing from, but I mean, it just seemed kind of obvious. You know what I mean? You got to uh, you got to cover up the goods a little bit. I mean, I would say that to Madonna. I don't know if she's currently dating somebody right now, but Madonna is in fucking unbelievable shape for her age. And if she would just put on something elegant, you know what I mean? Instead of rolling around with half a f- fucking pussy lip hanging out. I don't know why she does that. She said something late, you know, she did yet another. Like her whole fucking career has been like one big publicity stunt after another. You know, I'm wearing a, a wedding dress, but I'm fingering myself at the fucking awards show, right? You know, right from there. And then, oh, it's Jesus, but he's African-American. And now I'm trying to fuck him. It's just paint by numbers shock. And what's funny is I actually like her music. Borderline, feel like I'm done. I just keep, you know, that's actually how I threw out my back doing that Molly Ringwald dance. Um, Anyways. Yeah. And then she goes on Letterman. She says, fuck 50,000 times. She does stand up on the Tonight Show. It's just one big fucking thing after another. So her latest one was she showed up to a movie theater, not a movie, a movie premiere or whatever the fuck. She, I don't know who the fuck knows what it was. You know, some fundraiser to get toothbrushes to uh, some fucking God's forsaken place. So she shows up. And she literally has her titties and her ass out, like a see-through dress. And she, of course, says, well, what I'm doing is I'm challenging the boundaries. And, um, of you know, of course, women, you know, you got to drag all that bullshit in there. It's like, no, you're 57. Okay, nobody wants to look at that, okay? Like, at my age, I am, I am well into put on a fucking sport coat. <laughs> nobody wants to see it. It's just, uh, yeah, you're not pushing any boundaries. It's just, it's a, uh, you know, you're having a little bit of a midlife crisis. I think she looks fucking great, but she'd look way better if she fucking just, you know, you know, put on, put on a fucking dress. The fuck are you doing? I, mean, I don't know. But then again, I saw Iggy Pop and he wasn't wearing a shirt, but I don't find, guys aren't like attractive. It was just sort of funny to me. Not funny. I just was, just him not giving a fuck. So I guess if she just said, look, I don't give a fuck. I just felt like having my ass and titties hanging out. I wouldn't have a problem with that. But but the fact that she's sitting there trying to say that. No, no, wait a minute. I think she might be right. Maybe she is right. Hey, Nia. Come here. You got to answer this question. There's a chance I might become enlightened. And understand Madonna more. Until she comes here, I'll sing. I'll sing some of her, my favorite songs by her. Uh, bad boy, no bad girl, home by six. Hey, pick up the mic. I got a question for you. Now you want me back? Yep, that's like that street joke I told you, right? What's the one I heard Jackie the Joke Man tell? The one about the gorilla. No, the one with the, the, the fucking... Because <laughs> I like that one. The married guy, he's walking out of the house and his wife's yelling at him. Go, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out. I never want to see you again. Mm-hmm. So he's walking away and she goes, I hope you die a long, slow, miserable death. And he turns around and he goes, oh, what? Now you want me back? <laughs> that's, stupid. Well, that's a stupid joke. Just reminded me of that. Anyway, yeah. I could have told it better, but I, got a, I just got off the plane. Jackie the Joke Man tells it way better. Um... All right, so Madonna recently, mm. borderline, mm-hmm. um, she showed up at some fucking, you know, raise awareness thing. 
I don't know what it was. <laughs> there was okay. a carpet. She showed up, and she had her butt cheeks out and her titties out. Okay, this was the Met Ball that happens every year in New York City. And that's for the Mets? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Go Mets. But it's just for one of them? <laughs> I know. It's for the fucking museum. Yes. The hacky date. Every fucking person in their 20s goes on in New York. And Madonna. Let's go to a museum. Um, it's a big gala. Only the creme de la creme, darling, are invited. Uh, so Ralph Lauren pretends to fall and he sniffs her butt on the way down. Is that what happens? What? <laughs> you know, those super rich people, they're all freaks, aren't they? I guess. Wasn't that the point of Eyes Wide Shut? <laughs> I don't know what the point of Eyes Wide Shut was. <laughs> well, what happened was Stanley Kubrick died. I liked it. He died halfway through. I saw a great fucking movie on the plane called The Insiders. It's a, a movie made by uh, some Korean director, man. It was fucking phenomenal. Oh. Mm-hmm. Really enjoyed it. Okay. Had one of the best fucking fight scenes. The I, I've, I've, I've seen, because the guy was missing a hand. Mm-hmm. You know, so he had to like fucking, you know, everybody knew what hand he was throwing, right? <laughs> and it was multiple attackers. It was okay. the shit. I almost gave it a standing ovation on the plane. Mm, all right. If it was pre-9-11, I could have done it. But I started to do it. And they were like, sir, sir, why are you being hostile? <laughs> and I had to sit down. Okay. It's another freedom lost. So anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking... Madonna shows up. Uh huh. Yeah, I saw her. Okay. So she says that she's trying to fucking push the boundaries of all, whatever, the fucking sex and that type of thing. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I was going like, now come on, you're 57. No one wants to see me without a shirt on. Granted, she's in better shape than I am. But, like, you know, I'm in my, my sport coat years, like, you know, covered up there, freckles. <laughs> right? So what I'm saying is. You, you're in your sport coat years? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you get to a certain point. You get in your 40s and stuff like that. Women dress elegantly and men dress like gentlemen. Yeah, in other words, I like that. Yeah, you cover up, uh, you know, the fucking battle scars of what you've been through. Okay. Too many fucking wine and cheese plates. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, so I was saying, if Madonna just put on a nice dress, she could look really elegant. Yeah. Right? That's not really her vibe. Yeah, I know. I know. But you know something? It's like... Like, look, he, who's Ken who? Michael Jackson, if, if he was still alive. Do you, the, the short pants with the glitter socks. It's like, <laughs> come on, dude. some point, you got to update the look. What is, what is your point with this whole Madonna thing? Is that so I, w- I was saying that, but then I was like, wait a minute. But when I saw Iggy Pop with no shirt on, mm. I thought it was badass that, that he didn't give a fuck. So that, that's, that's bullshit. So I should be actually applauding Madonna. Wow, look at you. See that? That's yeah, not, that's, that's not, nice. oh, okay, I was going to say, you were going like, wow, look at you, you're really not as dumb. So my apologies to Madonna. Borderline. <laughs> Feels like I'm showing off my behind. Take it, look at my fucking 57-year-old titties. <laughs> she's not T- 57. <laughs> she's my age, we're 10, she's 10 years, we're 10 years apart. So she's 50, wait, what? Madonna's I, about 57 years old. Wait, is yes, she? Yes, she is. She was born is the she? same year as Prince. Oh, shit. No, the same year as Michael Jackson. Michael oh. Jackson was 58. Prince was 58. I think Madonna was 58. I never know how old Madonna is ever. And that was like in 19... 19- she's 57. Oh, my God. You're yeah, right. She's going to be 58, right? I had no idea. In August, yeah, she'll be 58. Yeah. Hmm. So 1958, as far as music goes, Mm -hmm. was kind of like 1943. 1943 was Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, and Jim Morrison. Mm -hmm. All born 1943. And then they all died in 1970. And then people started to understand drugs and, you know, bringing a jump rope on the road and maybe becoming a vegan. So now they, they live longer. Michael made it to 50. Prince made it to 57. Madonna's still going. Okay. Right. So all of them (laughs) in their own way kind of went on stage with their ass hanging out. Right. Um, okay. (laughs) Where are you going with this? Nowhere. I got to fill fill up an hour. I got to, okay. I want to do some questions here. Okay. So you brought me in to show me that you've, 
evolved in seeing your own. No, I was trying double to. Standards I was trying to see if that, if that was a double aging standard. Aging women and showing their bodies. Yeah, and you know, gotcha. double standard also works with women the way they look at guys in certain situations too. You guys aren't like perfect. No one, no one is claiming to be perfect. Okay, well, the media just seems to cover your complaints. <laughs> And then this just When happened. will you ever have a voice? Uh-huh. Thank God you have this podcast. I know. No one would hear me. Yeah. Listen, Nia, yes, you got to understand, the world doesn't live with me. They don't have the privilege of living with me the way you do. <laughs> so I need to do this once a week. <laughs> That's a fucking beautiful watch. Who got you that? You did. That's right. Oh. Asshole. Really? Response... <laughs> To stinky German from last week. So this poor bastard, uh, he's German, right? Yes. And uh, so he lives in Germany. Mm-hmm. He's old school. Okay. He didn't leave and try to be like, hey, I wasn't part of that Hitler thing. Right. I got right? it. Right? He still lives in Germany. Yeah. His grandparents <laughs> said, you know, I don't know if it's me, but this guy's making a lot of sense. So. <laughs> because... <laughs> so because. Of the mistakes of his forefathers and mothers, the gods have cursed him that he just sort of smells a little musty. And he's, he tries showering, he does all this shit, he doesn't know what the fuck to do. So evidently, this, this, this other musty guy, formerly musty guy, heard about this. Mm-hmm. Okay? Does he look into his diet? Yeah, we, we talked about that. And halitosis, and maybe you have a fucking... A, a sinus infection. I don't know what, but he, he just, just like sm- he just smells bad. Yeah, all no matter time. matter how much he showers. So that this guy sucks. says, yeah. And he wears deodorant. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was quite it's quite a mystery. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. So this person's in response to this. This is a formerly musty person. So I hope this helps the uh, the sauerkraut. This... Oh <laughs> Jesus, Jeez. <laughs> That is my best fucking pun ever. I'm sorry, but that shit was great. All right. That was pretty wow. good. That was pretty that good. Was good. That was good. I'll give you that. That was good. <laughs> All right. I'm going to, I'm going to, he said, I'm going to and keep this simple because we all know of your reading issues. <laughs> Uh, what I admittedly have. I've been a fan for years, but this is the first time I feel the need to chime in on something. Last week, you read a question from a German guy that had a musty body odor and did not know what to do about it. He said, growing up, I dealt with the same bullshit that poor sap is going through. I always smelled musty. I could not wash it away no matter how often I showered. This is brutal. I feel bad for these people. I tried everything and finally realized it was it was antiperspirant. For some weird reason, my body reacted when I put it on, and I smelled musty. I actually stopped wearing deodorant for a few weeks in the winter, so I did not smell like a complete savage. After that period of time, I began wearing deodorant only, skipping all brands with antiperspirant. Uh, Happily, the stinky, musty odor went away. Hope this works, you stinky fuck. Love the podcast, your comedy, and F is for family, and go fuck yourself. Yeah, so basically what I got from that is maybe his body is having a reaction to something that he is using. I don't know. Because right. your body should sweat. It's the way to keep you cool, right? That's the whole point of sweating. So antiperspirant. I know maybe people who sweat excessively, they don't want to be sweating through their clothes or something. So I don't know, but it sounds like that person should go to a doctor. Well, they haven't been able to figure out what's going on. And he's in mm. Germany, too. And those guys don't fuck around over there. <laughs> They're very efficient. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm like, sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, the, the cars, the trains, the rocket side tree, you know. <laughs> Everybody could just forgive him for that one crazy 10-year oh, period. They, they got a little sideways. <laughs> they'll, never, they'll never live it down. No. You can't. Sorry. You know what? It's on video. That's why. <laughs> You know, other countries can do shit and it happened before, like a certain something that happened in 1915 that we always see advertised. Uh, My vote, dear Bill on Capitol Hill. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you should. You know what? If there was movie cameras around, you would. Movie cameras? Yep. Motion picture (laughs) things. Have you ever heard of Vermin Supreme? Um, He's been on. I, I don't. I don't believe that this is somebody's name. I'm going to look this up before you guys make a fool of me, <laughs> which is not hard to do. Why don't you read it first? 
because then I start commenting, and then halfway through, I realize it's a prank phone call. <laughs> Vermin <laughs> phone Supreme, call. it's coming up. It's Vermin a Supreme. Vermin Supreme is an American performance art- artist and activist who has run as a candidate in various, lo- various local states. Um, okay, let me see what this. what's up with this guy. Okay, I never heard of this guy. He's been on the ballot in New Hampshire, and his platform has a lot to do with dental health. He also has a plan in place for the zombie apocalypse, which involves setting up thousands of treadmills to put the zombies on to help power the new world. He wears a giant boot on his head. Oh, I've seen this fucking guy, the boot. That's right. And carries around a a rubber toothbrush. Here's an article on him. He also has promised free ponies for everyone. Ooh. (laughs) So he's a whack job. I don't know if he's a whack job because that's a really funny joke, though. The zombies on the treadmill. Are you looking him up or are you texting? No. I was looking at Madonna photos. Okay, we 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 back here. Oh, and we've no, we've moved on. We've moved on. But I just was still looking at photos. I'm here. Papa, I'm don't preach. I'm in trouble deep. Do you know any? Papa, don't. Do you preach. know any new Madonna songs? And I feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just had. A, I'm sorry. I, I did my fucking. I did. I did too many shows. Do you need to do shows. your 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 vocal warm ups? Yeah, this was not a good look at the Met Ball. It was just. I yeah. It, mm, mm, oh, mm. ladies, can we stick together? First of all, just and because I a woman feel, is that's criticizing it, another that woman, I just got something. I feel um, right. Yeah, home. But no, it's not. I'm not being catty. She just. It's just so thirsty. It's just, I don't, mm -mm. And I love Madonna, but this is just too much. Are you done? Yeah, I'm I'm done. It makes me sad. I'm sure her kids enjoy it. Uh, (laughs) Wife's family is a bunch of dramatic babies. Oh, God. You're the baby. Here we go. Hey, Bill, (laughs) I'm sick of this election. I hope Trump wins. I know he's a jerk, but I hate Hillary, and I think Bernie is a nice guy without a clue. He says a lot of great things, but he's going to raise taxes. He talks about making college free, but his taxes will make it hard. Nothing is free. That, yeah, that's never going to happen. But, but nothing, you know, free health care. It's not, it's not free. Like, yeah. Somebody's got to fucking pay for it. He talks about making college free, but his taxes will make it harder for people like me to pay my student loans. I make ninety five grand a year. I have a kid, hundred grand in student loans between me and my wife. We live comfortably. But if you take another twenty five hundred to four thousand dollars from me a year, I will feel it. Yeah, definitely. I am already only netting sixty. What is the fuck is all of this? Yeah, what's the point? The family is a bunch of dramatic babies. All right, blah 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 blah. Um. Okay, so we're getting to we're getting to his family here somewhere. Okay. I'm not opposed to giving money to help people who need it, but when is enough enough? A trillion dollars on dumb shit every year and you need more from me? Fuck off, Bernie. I love how he's blaming Bernie. You know, it, Bernie didn't create the fucking situation. Um He's trying to get us out of it, I guess. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't think I mean, I don't know if people work with the guy, but Oh, God, what a fucking decision this year. Um, So I make this point to my wife, my wife's family. I didn't yell. I didn't say fuck off, Bernie. I just said I don't think we, the people, should have to give more money if they're wasting the money they already get. Well, my wife's family lost their shit. They said that I'm selfish and that if I vote for Trump, I'm endorsing hate and greed and fascism. Uh, Really? Question mark. They endorsed Obama and I have a problem with him hatefully blowing up kids and wedding parties with drones. Why doesn't that make them hateful? Uh, they then went on to talk about for 30 minutes about hate and how there's, they were scared about what would happen to the country. And they're scared about how children will grow up in a country with, and I quote, Hitler minus the concentration camps. I told them that comparing an egomaniac to Hitler is unfair to the victims of the Holocaust It trivializes the actual evil of Hitler embodied. Her mother and father were both taken aback and said that my way of thinking could potentially be dangerous to their grandchildren. What Uh period the fuck period is going period on period. Well, you dope. Yeah. You fucking opened up your big fucking mouth about politics. You are so dumb to talk about politics. No, he isn't. He's young. He doesn't know. 
That's well. Listen, now you know. Yeah. And this how did you why, learn? How did you learn? And by, how did I learn? By bringing it up. And by doing it that. Yeah. Thing. This is the so deal. So that's fair. Yeah. You know you can't talk about politics and religion and shit like that. Those are. I'm gonna say it work. got it got really heated. Yeah. Right before they said that shit. Well, you can't. And also, you just. <laughs> You can't, I don't know, you gotta be, if you really are going to vote for Trump, I just, <laughs> I think there's only certain sections of the United States where you could say that, where you'll get a, yeah, I get it, oh, well, tell me more about your opinion. I feel like if you say, you know what, fuck this, I'm voting for Trump, most people are gonna be like, are you fucking kidding me? So I'm not surprised at that, but. No, yeah, I actually you really... got a lot of shit when, when I, I was, I made fun of him when, uh, you know, I got some shit for it. For making fun of Trump? Yeah. From who? People who support Trump. Oh, well, okay, fine. Yeah, they, they, believe it or not, there's people that I, support. I know. I know. He I know. has a lot more than I thought. Remember when he was first talking about running and we were both like, this is never going to happen. This is a joke. This is ridiculous. And now here we are. And he's like the only Republican left standing. So, I mean, I guess I underestimated him. Yeah, he's like the, the Lester Republican City. Party. He's like the Lester City of, of polit- politicians. Um, but here's the thing, so though. I also family... think, but I think like... You know, Hillary Clinton is the fucking devil because she's acting like she gives a fuck. And she's, you know, she's one of those Bilderberg people. I don't like her. I like Bernie. Out of all of them, I like Bernie Sanders. I just don't think anybody's going to fucking work with him. Well, the California primary is coming up, so he's he's not throwing in the towel yet. Bernie. Bernie. Well, we gotta, I have to, you know we something? Gotta, we got to vote in the primary. I have to vote we for a guy. I, I have to vote for a person that I feel is actually truly gives a shit. About regular people. And yeah. and that would be him. Whether he's going to be successful or not. And I know what a lot of people are saying. Like, oh, you fucking vote for him. You're going to put Trump in office. <laughs> I've always voted for the fucking third wheel. Every fucking goddamn time. Well, when the primary happens, we got to vote for him. That's the only way that he'll stand Listen, I don't have to do anything that you say. Okay. But I'll, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. So basically, his this guy's in-laws do you know what we just did? hate him. Do you know now. what we just did? What's that? We just did what this guy did. Which is what? We just fucking talked politics and gave endorsements to Bernie Sanders. We shouldn't have done that. I still haven't made up my mind that I'm going to do that. Why are we – we're giving endorsements just by talking about it? By saying that you're going to do it. Well, that's how I feel. We're like that guy that – fuck. we're like those those people that you see on Facebook and they I'm go, not, hey, I'm do you know me? I, be... I pretend to be a doctor on a soap <laughs> opera and I think this is who you should vote for. I apologize for that, people. I, I, I try not to say that. Eventually, yeah, no, eventually not, it was going to come out. We're not endorsing up. anybody. We're – well, let's just leave it. At I'll that. tell you what I'm endorsing: <laughs> a nice fucking cold Budweiser when I sit down to watch Game Five. <laughs> That's what so I endorse. So, what is what does he want to know? He's just sort of like, "What the hell? Now my now my in laws don't want me to have children with my wife because they think I'm evil, and they they're gonna I'm gonna raise a little evil Trump's." My thing children. about Trump is his fucking lack of compassion for fucking people. When you sit there and say, "Take his coat." Yeah. You're like riling people up like that well, was of course. just he says the most he says really really awful things but the thing i like about him is he lets me know that they actually count the votes because no super rich people want that fucking guy and i always thought for years my conspiracy theory is like they don't count these fucking things they just oh it's pretty fucking close and they put the money on both horses and then they're fucking fine but uh the fact that he's actually doing well he's speaking to a lot of people out there needy i uh, uh... He's going to build a wall, and he's going to have the people he's walling in pay for it. I'm telling you, he's talking mad shit. I don't know. I feel like I, all those years of watching The Apprentice and The Celebrity Apprentice are now coming back to when bite me. When he tried to find a CEO for a company that doesn't exist. It's all coming back to bite me in the ass. I've been supporting him this whole entire time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm partly to blame for this bullshit. <laughs> so what is this kid saying? Well, look, saying? he can't be a what complete is, moron. What is, what is this kid saying? What is his point? He just is... No, he's just saying, what, what the fuck? So I was... We just... Well, you will not talk about politics anymore around your in-laws. I'll yeah. tell you that much. But then he said, looking forward to seeing you in Dublin. Myself and some friends are, will be coming from Belfast. Well, I'm going to be doing Belfast, too. So you, you don't are? even... Yeah, you don't even need to do that. Yeah, and we're putting together the dates. Like, I'm definitely doing Dublin, definitely doing so Belfast. So exciting. Yeah, I'm doing a little 10-day tour over there because sc- it's not a good time to go to Scandinavia this time of year because they actually mm-hmm. have sunlight and it's warm out. Okay. So, Versus, yeah. Why is when that? I usually – well, because they're going to want to be outside. 
Okay. Yeah, but and, if you, oh, if you, yeah, yeah, if you go in December and it's already yeah, fucking they, dark. Yeah, they go to movies and stuff still, though, I would imagine. Just because it's sunlight most of the time doesn't mean they All right, why would I listen to the promoters over there? Oh, I'll, I'll listen to them. All right, all right. Okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when is this happening? I'm going to go. It's going to be happening uh, end of July. Like, I think it's going to start on the 31st and it's going to go into August. Very excited about that. Exciting things are happening. I love Ireland. You right. know I love the people of Ireland. Hey, look who you're with. Little potato <laughs> face himself here. <laughs> Advice with neighbors. I'm mostly German, though. <laughs> Almighty Billy. I actually don't even know that because I have never done the whole uh But you've always said that. Thing. You're always like I'm more German than Irish. Because I am. German, Irish, Catholic. Doesn't Podcaster. Get, doesn't get any whiter. Doesn't get Podcaster any dumber than that. doesn't get any whiter. All right. <laughs> Almighty Billy Ballbangs. Uh, all right. Advice with neighbors. Question. I live in an apartment complex here in the lovely state of Oklahoma, and I have this neighbor who lets her dog out on her balcony every morning somewhere between the hours of 4 and 5 a.m. The dog barks aggressively for hours afterward. Of course. It wakes me up. Poor thing. The uh, dog, that is. <laughs> and this what about guy. this poor bastard and this here? Poor, and this or poor lady. Oklahomian. Um, Oklahoman? Oklahomian? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, where am I? Oklahoma sexual? <laughs> no? No. Isn't that one of the characters on your Nashville show? <laughs> I want to write a song with you. Will Lex About did. us. The gay cowboy The gay Nashville? cowboys. The gay cowboys. I love Cutting edge show. character. That's the first gay cowboy ever in prime time. In prime time, yes. I in believe prime so. time, yeah. Mm-hmm. During the lunch hour, it was just littered with them when I was growing up. <laughs> Those people on Captain Kangaroo, right? <laughs> Ernie and Bert. Isn't that what they said, all those guys, right? All right, question. I live in an apartment complex here in the lovely state yeah, of Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. The dog barks aggressively for hours. It wakes me up, and I have to, go to, I have to work at 8 a.m. I filed complaints after an altercation in which I went out and screamed, shut your fucking dog up before I make you shut him up. Oh, was that your opening line? <laughs> That's not. Or something along those lines. My mes- my message has not been heard by the apartment cunts, and she continues <laughs> to let the dog out. What should I do? Sincerely, a blue-collared working man just trying to get some fucking sleep. Who's your super? Also, St. Louis Blues gave the stars a fucking molly whopping today. I hope you watched it. I missed that. Um, well, fuck. You're in, you're in Oklahoma, man. You know what you need to do. Take out your side iron. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, take the fucking dog out. It's the bill. Blow! Don't, hey, hey, hey. don't even joke about it. Put it that. with rubber bullets. Don't even joke about that. Who's your super? No, you, you put compl- rubber you bullets in the gun. Don't, and every time the dog stop barks. Stop talking about Every time the dog barks, dogs. you shoot it in its ass. Stop it. And it starts, to, oh, when I bark, and then it'll shut up. No, you can't do that. Uh, you would get arrested for that. So... Why then I would just your... go down. I would buy a month's worth of cube steaks. <laughs> right? Why does it? Does the dog shit and piss on the balcony? Is that why she's letting it out there? Because that's gross. I don't know, but that is so fucking not acceptable. Because you know what's yeah, probably? The uh, fucking dog gets up at 4 or 5 a.m. and yeah. it's keeping her up. Mm-hmm. Or so him she... up. So they, they, oh my God. No, it's, you got you to gotta call the landlord um, or something. Oh, wait, did he say that they're not paying attention at the... At, like, what do you say? It's not going over well with the the people in the apartment. Well, he has a. She just has a neighbor. I can't. I don't think. The, oh, it's an apartment complex. Yeah, you got to say something to the management company. Well, look, there's no fucking way he's the only person that's annoyed by this. Of course, I would no. go around, and I I would get a bunch of signatures, and then I would, you know, try to have everybody all get together and say. Uh, <laughs> that bitch needs to shut the other bitch up. <laughs> oh, Cleo! Oh, snuck on. What's up, buddy? Yeah, this little baby. How are you? It's time for this right. one probably to go out, speaking of all that. All right. Well, you do that while I will wrap up the podcast here. No, you take her out. I took her um, twice already. Hey, I was in Jacksonville this morning. That's my, uh, that's my excuse. All right. Well, that's going to be the... Uh... Go lay down. Wait, so we didn't offer any advice besides your horrible joking advice, of course. I just said you get a bunch of signatures. You can't, not signatures is not going to do shit. You got to go to the management company and be like, 
This dog is barking at four or five in the morning every morning. No, he it's said he wrong. already did that. Oh, and they're not paying attention? He said he's in this fucking... Uh, so what do you think signatures are going to do? Hey, technology, you like to hear, but, 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 no, that's not it. Nah, oh, wait, I missed one. He said, I, like uh, he I have this name. I live in an apartment complex. The dog barks. I have filed complaints. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like nothing's happening. Oh, that sucks. Well, so you have to do this thing. I'm not going to pay my fucking rent. There you go. I'm not paying my rent until you, you get this woman to shut this damn dog up. Yeah, because it's not fair. Yeah, I how about how that? how long she's lived there. That sounds like something an older person would do, too. Just, oh. like, put their dog out <laughs> on the balcony. <laughs> And just let it bark all morning. Because it probably goes out, takes a piss, takes a shit, and then wants to come inside. And meanwhile, the owner has gone back to sleep. All right. Well, obviously, I was joking. You don't shoot at the dog. (laughs) No, you don't. All right. That's right, Cleo. Here's the other one. Um, All right. Virtual reality headset blowjob. All right. I know you hate technology, but would like to hear your opinion on this. My girlfriend half-jokingly promised me a double blowjob for my 30th birthday. Um, I do not expect this to happen, but I have been joking with her that the date is approaching and she should have a girl lined up, etc. I have also been talking about virtual reality slash VR headset as I'm thinking of getting one. I don't know what that is. Yeah, what is that? She asked me the other day, would I be able to watch porn through it? I said, yes. She then said, instead of the double buy, why don't you wear the headset and I can give you normal oh. buy while watching a porno. Wait, what are you, what word are you saying? Buy? Buy? Oh, BJ. Yeah. I'm like, That's not- oh, you know what? It was underlined in red. <laughs> So I couldn't see the bottom part. I was like, what is this buy? <laughs> oh, my re- God. Your reading skills are atrocious. <laughs> yeah, and buy would actually mean that there would be a guy and a girl doing it. I was even I was thinking about like his girlfriend would be like buy because she was down there with another chick. <laughs> I am stupid. See this, people? You two could be successful in life. You're as dumb as me. She then, so, she then instead, instead of a double BJ, let me read this again. Wow. Why don't you wear a headset and I can give you a normal BJ while watching a porno? Why can't you do that now with a TV? That's crazy. Because I feel like when they, that's some like weird Tron futuristic shit where you put it on. Is this like opening Pandora's it? box or is this yes. the, a way for VR to be seen as a techie sex toy? You are really asking the wrong person that question. You know Bill doesn't know what Looking the fuck is. Looking forward to see you in Dublin. <laughs> Myself and some friends will be coming from Belf. Oh, this is the, I, that was the one. Okay. Um, is this the same? No, I read the ending to the other one, <laughs> to that one. And it was weird because the ending was in front of the other one. <laughs> oh, fuck you and fuck oh everybody else. God. Yeah, yeah. Big, it's all funny. It's all fun and games until I stop podcasting. Huh? Oh, I've had enough of this. Sensitive BB. Um, no, nah, I'm not. I don't care. Um, it is a slippery slope, but I feel like that could be really kind of cool. Does she get to do it too? Like, does she get to watch some porn while you like go down on her? That would be really trippy. It would be trippy, but the thing is, then then what ends up happening is, is then you end up getting like uh, that that disconnect. Right, and now you don't want to do anything unless one of you is wearing the helmet. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> and then it's like <laughs> then it's weird. Oh my god, I have to like see you. So that's like a it's a dangerous. Yeah, yeah, that's like one of those things. Like, do you think I could do heroin once and like <laughs> be all right with that? No, I saw something. Um, I'm trying to think where I saw it. Saw what? In in one of those Asian countries, because they're always ahead of us. They have better cell phones. <laughs> there was a uh, a guy trying out like a virtual reality sex suit, mm-hmm. which I had a bit on this thing in like the uh, late 90s when I first heard that they were going to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, the fact that you haven't already called me out going like, well, Bill, <laughs> how did you just stumble upon this? I'm I'm dead honest. What I don't I was, remember. I was waiting for the rest of the story because I no. felt like there was more. It could have been while I was watching Internet porn. Probably. 
Yeah, but they don't have advertising advertisements for that. It was yeah, like a they story do. on the side of the thing. They have all those. And ads. how do you know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, right back at you. Moving right along. <laughs> so yeah, but they don't have they don't have ads like that. Right, that's true. Well, this is what what it was. It looked like a fucking dude. He was like in like a mummy suit. <laughs> It was hilarious. It looked like he was all wrapped up in toilet paper. That's how I remember it because it was so horrifying. It was just, it was one of those things, whatever I was looking at, that then came up and I went, ah, right? Mm-hmm. He was, and it looked like um, his hands were to his side. He had on the fucking, you know, I'm old and I can't see anymore. Mm-hmm. Those glasses, <laughs> those cataract glasses, cataract glasses from the drugstore. <laughs> yeah. So he had on those. He, I think he was all wrapped up because he didn't want anybody to see who he was. Yeah. Maybe okay. that's what it was. Okay. And then there was this thing. Obviously, his dick was in it. Oh my god. And it just the same way your hand would be going like bang, 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 bang against yourself. Uh-huh. It was this thing. It was the most fucked up thing ever. Wait, would you ever use one of those flesh bot things? You know how porn stars, they get no. a mold those of their vagina? those things are so fucking gross. I you think would those never things, try Those it? things are so fucking gross. I wonder, like, a long they... time ago, I did somebody's podcast. I'm not going to say who, but people uh-huh. who listen to podcasts know who is. Uh-huh. He had one of those things, and it looked like some Jeffrey Dahmer body part. Oh, I think I know automatically who you're talking Just about. Just yeah. sitting I, I don't think you do. Oh, okay. Because I know who you're going to guess, but it wasn't that person. Oh, okay. um, it looked no. It just looked like. And it, did he say that? It, did it feel like a real? It can't feel like a real vagina, obviously. But like it, if it, it's just it's. <laughs> I I I can't believe that it does like shit like that doesn't cause you to either be like become like a necrophiliac or some sort of person. A like, necrophiliac? Why would it make you be a necrophiliac? Because you're fucking something. That well, looks looks like a body part, and it's not alive. Well, like women have like dildos and vibrators and stuff, and it's like the same sensation. So why wouldn't a, one of those flesh bot things feel like? Isn't it kind of the it's same? It's just principle? like another Madonna Iggy Pop thing. No, Am no. Am I no. looking at it the wrong way? Maybe no. I don't think no. I don't think you're looking at it. The I wrong remember way. Nia back in the day. I just think back you, in the day, you don't like the idea of a fake vagina. <laughs> you don't. You're not comfortable. Just with that. sitting on a table, <laughs> and it has a handle on it, and I'm holding it. No. I just think that's not your thing. You're not into that. That feels like Henry portrait of a serial killer. <laughs> I remember back in the day, right, when you actually had to go to a porno store to get your porn. Mm-hmm. And they had like, you know, I was always behind the counter. Mm-hmm. And they would have shit up there. <laughs> One time. They had this. It was like, what's in the box? It was literally a head in a box. And the chick's mouth was like, Rrr, like you just stick your dick in it. Yeah. And I'm like, somebody's going to buy that. Yeah. And it was in like the same box like a basketball came in. And someone's going to take it and grab it by its fucking ears that are stuck to the side of its head. And they're just going to go home and fuck a head. Yeah. Just a head. It's now, there's weird. no fucking way mm-hmm. that that doesn't fuck you up psychologically. If you do that long enough. Then you go out with a real person. It's already annoying that they have to buy it dinner and that there's a whole body attached to it. And you have to talk to it. Yeah. <laughs> and then all they're thinking of just grabbing you by your ears. What a, what a, what a, what It's over. Yeah, it's fucked up. Well, I still feel like, well, going back to the question, I feel like they can experiment with it like once or twice, but it can't be like a regular thing that they're doing all the time because then, yeah, that'll completely fuck up your sex life. Because then you'll just be looking at everything you do. Like it's supposed to be this hyper reality, dual reality, virtual. It's just not good. You know, I was just thinking, well, let's just fast forward here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, so that becomes the thing. Right. Which you know it's going to. People are going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then what it's going to become is porn stars will be making all of that fucking money. Mm Mm-hmm. Be- and it basically, you have a girl fucking. Now nah, that'd probably just be like the whole suit. It's eventually just gonna be the whole suit, right? What are you talking about? Like I'm, the whole. I'm I'm talking about like in the future, like when e- like everybody has like a virtual reality sex suit. This will right. actually help the population problem, right? <laughs> the virtual reality sex suit. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then porn stars will then have their likeness. They'll do a POV porn mm-hmm. 
and then they get money and then you have to like subscribe oh, to them. So like you can do you know, like you can do a virtual reality thing where you actually with any get porn to have star. sex to ha- with like Asa Akira. And then he, like and that. then here's what happens. Yeah. Okay. Who's going to be the first celebrity that crosses over? <laughs> And eventually, right, Mm -hmm. because they're sick of doing superhero movies Mm -hmm. and they don't want to do the grunt work of an independent. Mm -hmm. Because, like, you notice now they're all doing ads over here. Back in the day, all the celebrities did ads, but they did them overseas, right? Mm -hmm. Remember we used to go over and we go, oh, look at so-and-so doing a fucking watch thing or look at her doing this thing. Mm -hmm. But they'd never do them here because there was that whole um, um, stigma. Mm-hmm. That if you did a commercial, you're a sellout, blah, 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 whatever the fuck it was. Or it's like you're doing a commercial. You're a movie star. A movie star's not even on TV. Forget about doing an ad. Mm-hmm. Now that all went away. Mm-hmm. You know? So I'm saying eventually somebody famous would do it. Right. You could, uh, yeah, get a suit and program it so that you're having sex with like Lindsay Lohan or someone. Right. And the well, first, and the first, and the first do level will go her. down. No, it would be like, a, like one of those. <laughs> Reality TV show stars. Right. You know, when the reality show goes off the air, like Jersey Shore, they were all fucking huge. Now it's just disappeared. Where the fuck are they? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. You could probably talk a couple of them into doing it. Right. Are we yeah. pitching a show right now? I think, or some kind of like high tech concept that would probably make a lot of money. That's going to end up happening. It sounds like a movie. It sounds like, like a, what was Gattaca And then this about? is what's going to happen. You're going to have was? these self driving fucking or cars. Her. You're going to have self driving fucking cars, and people are going to be laying in them in virtual reality suits, having, <laughs> having sex, sex with any famous person they want to. <laughs> right? And they'll have like, because you don't need a steering wheel or gas or brake or anything anymore, you literally have like your suit in there. And then when you're done, you roll over up from that seat into like another like a uh, like a freshen up like tub or some shit. We're to- I think we're totally going in that direction. I think you're right. We'll 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 see it in the next generation. Before it was just yeah the flesh bot stuff where it's just the mold of the vagina or the dick or whatever, and then it's going to be this virtual. It'll be super expensive at first. It's going to go into a complete. It's going to be like when flat screen TVs first came yeah. out and they're fourteen grand. So don't buy the first virtual yeah. reality don't buy sex the first- suit. <laughs> Virtual Wait till they like they come down to like eight hundred bucks at Best Buy, <laughs> then you get them right. Should we figure out how to like make this technology and just like patent it? <laughs> That's how we'll make our make our yeah. Fortune. Nia, we're we're gonna figure out how to do that. <laughs> I can't even read copy, but no. We're- we're calling it that like that's what's going to happen. It. I'm already yeah. selling right now with these self driving cars, like the interiors of cars. What they're going to have now? They're going to have office ones. They're going to have sleeper ones. People just want to sleep going to work. Mm-hmm. They're going to have ones to, to catch up on your emails and all of that type of shit. Yeah. The different – you're gonna, those that will be like the different um, – the, the social one, the social and office one, all of that type of – all of that, I don't know. And then eventually it's going to be like, well, why are you even going to work now? Because everything's automated and then there's robots, right? Mm-hmm. And then one day the whole fucking thing just turns on us. What if there was a company – like in some place really random, not really random, like a Japan. Or By the way, like neither that. one of us is high right now. No, not at all. Completely that high. It's the middle of the day. Never been more sober. What if there was a company somewhere in like, I don't know, not Japan, but like Eastern Europe that said, we want to <laughs> do this deal with you where we have these like sex dolls with your face on them <laughs> and they offered you like an, what, insane, me? Yeah, an insane amount of money. No. No. <laughs> to do it. No. And you can buy a Bill Burr sex doll. <laughs> do you realize the photoshops I'm going to get and I'm going to have to retweet oh now, God, you asshole? <laughs> You're right. Shit. Oh, they're going to be horrifying, <laughs> but hilarious. Like a Bill Burr sex doll. <laughs> um, <laughs> Would you do? Yeah, they come out of like somewhere random, like, you know, Norway or just something or like, you know. One of those it's a place random like Norway. I love <laughs> no, Norway. That's, that's not random enough. Like, you know, Turkmenistan or one of right. those fucking places. I'm not even saying it right, but just a random little pocket that was just like, you know, we have five million dollars and we want to make sex toys yeah, no. with your face no. on them. <laughs> no. You wouldn't go for it? Can you imagine that phone call out of nowhere? No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I w- no, I, I can honestly tell you that I wouldn't. <laughs> uh, no, I know you wouldn't. Well, yeah, I would think so. How the fuck did we get all the way over here? See, this is why I love the questions. Great questions. Because, oh, look, right, because look, of the person in their virtual blowjob. Or in their uh, buy, according to you. 
Hey, I never claimed to be smart since the beginning of these podcasts. I don't know. I I I I I don't claim to be smart. And with that, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> Um, sorry the podcast was so late. Um, I was flying back from Jacksonville, as I mentioned. Um, several times. Several times. I complained about it. And uh, I'll be checking in on you on Thursday. I'll see you. Go Blues! <laughs>